Okay, so good morning. Thank you for being here. It's a pleasure for me to present Marcio Sequeira de Oliveira. Marcio is a Brazilian architect and master of science in civil engineering. His research focuses on finding educational solutions that can help to bridge the gap between architecture and structural engineering. Since 2004, he has been working on the MOLA Structural Model Project that he will be presenting today, which is an educational physical model designed to simulate real structures behavior. In 2014, after 10 years trying to raise funds, he launched MOLA's first edition on the internet, MOLA Structural Kit number one, now we are presenting number two also, and in only 11 days, MOLA became the largest crowdfunding campaign in Brazil. Today, his solution, MOLA, is being used by universities and companies from more than 60 countries around the world. He has received some important design awards with MOLA project, like the Premio Design Museo da Casa Brasileira, which is the most uh, prestigious design award in Brazil. And now he has been selected uh, for the Biennale Ibero-American de Diseño, which is taking place uh, these days in Madrid, which is why we had the, the occasion to, to have it here at, uh, at the school. For me, it's also uh, particularly, I'm particularly excited that, that he came to, to, to visit our school, since I had the occasion to, to meet him in the first uh, international conference on structure and architecture that took place on Guimarães in 2010. And actually he presented in that conference the, the model. You had just read the, your PhD thesis about it, I, I the think, thesis. the master thesis. And I can tell you it was an absolutely success, the, the, his presentation. I mean, everybody after his presentation wanted to play it and to touch the, the model kit, which we could have the, the occasion to do after the, the conference. So, so thank you very much, Marcio. It's a pleasure. Enjoy. OK. Um, first of all, thanks for having me here also. It's a pleasure to be here to talk to you a little bit about this project. Um, I will talk about the history behind the, the model also, because I think it's interesting. When I met Professor Alejandro uh, in 2010, it was just one part of the whole thing. So I will show you a lot of things from initial idea, design process, fundraising, and commercial things, and a lot of other details about this project. So MOLA, I like to say it's kind of a Lego for engineers and architects that can simulate real structures behavior. Uh, and the idea for this model came to me when I was an architecture student. I always felt structural lessons very abstract. And since the beginning, the question was what makes something concrete? And when we analyze something through our senses, means, means this is concrete. And we all know that structural behavior, it's kind of, of abstract subject because most of the time we cannot see um, deformations and displacements in real buildings. So that's why it's really complicated to understand. So, and also the loads that are involved in a structure is too high values. So we don't know what, how it feels 100 ton or 500 ton. We don't have this feeling. So the idea from all is to bring this physical phenomenon to the range of our senses. So we can see the deformations, displacements, and we can also feel it because we use our own hands to apply loads and to understand how uh, the structures uh, behave. So this is a quick video showing how the, the model uh, works. All the connections are made by magnets, so it's also easy to assemble. You don't need technical instructions to use the model, anyone can use it. Um, every element represents one or more elements of a real structure. So here we have these elements that represent the foundation, makes the connection of the structures with the ground. All the bars are made by steel springs. Connections are made by steel spheres. So for instance, this is a pinned connection. We have a plane frame. It's an unstable structure if you apply any load, like a horizontal load. And we have a lot of other structural elements as bracing systems, for example. Now we have a stable structure, the same plane frame, 
And we can understand how uh, bracing systems work when just applying the load. If you change the direction, it changes everything, so you can see right away. So this is the idea. And the cool thing is that you can change the configurations of the structure anytime you want, the boundary conditions and other elements. For example, now I will turn this pinned connection into a rigid connection. So you just add some elements here to make it rigid. So now we are have, having moment transmission and we will be able to see how the structure will behave. We can use the same elements to also make it rigid between bars. And now we have a different system with a different behavior and we can see right after applying the loads, you can see the moment, which is the uh, rotation of the connection, the transmitting the, the, the forces through the elements. So as I said, uh, we can take it off and see what happened. It's a pinned connection, it's a rigid connection. Um, and you can change any time you want. So Now we have similar behavior between the columns, both pinned on the bottom and rigid connections on the top. Now just one rigid connection, directly one is enough to make it this uh, stable structure. And when I take this, I come to the first configuration. So if I apply any load here, this structure doesn't work. So as you can see, uh, in a simple structural system, just a plane frame, how many phenomena we can understand like in an easy and intuitive way. This was my first presentation of MOLA. This was right at the beginning of the idea. We didn't have yet the, the ground connections, so it was really at the beginning. And after this presentation at the university, some professor invited me to take the master course in civil engineering. And I accepted the challenge. And my research was to prove that the behavior of the model was similar to a real structure's behavior because we want to be sure that we can trust the model to analyze different structural systems. So the idea was to compare with real structures behavior simulated in the software. So we got a, the model's behavior. We used the SAP 2000 to simulate a real structure. And after that, we overlapped those images to prove that this behavior was similar to the real one. So we started with single elements as columns, beams, and going through plane structures into more complex and spatial frames and other structural systems. So we can see how the, the behavior is really similar. The proportion between the deformed shape between bars and between elements, it's really similar. And we also didn't need all that precision because we are talking about qualitative analysis. So it's just behavior. Now we have uh, spatial frames. So there was more than 40 different structural systems and we changed boundary conditions and also load cases. Uh, here we also wanted to show uh, the versatility of the model, how with the same elements you can build and assemble different structural systems. So we took existing buildings to demonstrate with the model. Sometimes structures that seems like very complex Actually, most of them are really simple. The, the structural principles are really simple. So here are just um, some examples of these structural systems. So this was part of the research also. Um, this was one of the classes that I had uh, in Brazil as an architect. And there's one professor who used this toy made of plastic and it was a really interesting activity and I'm sure this kind of activity stimulated me to create MOLA. And actually we were designing a roof system for a, a class, design class, and we were asked to design this roof and we came up with a solution which was uh, trusted arches suspended this big uh, roof system. So I was not comfortable about designing one thing that I didn't know how it works because I was start to ask myself why all these bars, why this form? And I decided to build an arch by myself. 
this was how the, the idea started. And I started to build with wood sticks and magnets. So it was a really interesting activity. I couldn't understand how the structure behaves just by playing with. And it was really good, but I, I kept curious about the structure behavior. So I wanted to see what's happening each bar of this structure, but I could not see anything through the wood sticks because it was really rigid. I could not see the formations. So I started to build different materials to trying to find something that, I, that would make it able to understand and to visualize all those things. So I started with plastic tubes, uh, rubber, wires. This is barbecue, uh, wood sticks, everything I got in front of me, I was trying, making a lot of experiments. And until I got to the springs, and which is the, what's the best material because we can apply loads and get big deformations. When you take the load out, the elements come to the original shape, so it works really good. And I'm saying that because it was a really interesting thing that happened uh, on this process. I spent one day working with these plastic tubes and the solution for our problems is not always where we are looking for. I spent one day working with this. It was late at night. I need to take a shower and my electric shower was broke and I needed to change the resistance of the electric shower. So when I took it out of the plastic bag, I was like, okay, maybe a spring would be a good solution. And on the next day, I was inside a spring factory making a lot of different kinds of, of springs until you get to the shape that I wanted. So I think this is important to to understand how things can be related. And it's common in, in civil engineering and architecture. You use solutions from nature, for example, to get a problem solved in a project, for example. So I think this is important, not just for structural engineer or architecture. I think anything in life, any problem, you can find solutions in different places. So this is one thing that I like to share because when we see a product, we don't know what's behind it, so how long it takes to, to get to the final uh, solution. So this is how I realized that maybe a spring could be a good solution. So, so those are, are some images. So this uh, was uh, small images from this whole process. At the beginning, we had only the bars and the pinned connections. It was really amazing, but we wanted to simulate real structures. So after that, we decided to create other elements as rigid connections, ground connections, and continuing connections, slabs, walls, bracing systems, and a lot of other elements. And the great challenge was to make it as simple as possible and really close to a real structure. So this, this was the, the, the main challenge of this design process. So after the, the research about the validation, where I met Professor Alejandro in Portugal, um, a lot of people uh, started to ask me to, uh, to buy a kit of the model. But the model was a system as a whole thing. We didn't have a product. And Alejandro's brother, which also professor here, uh, he started to change emails with me. Also another professor from Switzerland and a lot of people trying to, to buy one unit of the, the model. So how, this is how uh, came the idea for creating a kit of pieces. It was to make something very, really compact that you can put in your backpack, for example, and take anywhere. And this was the idea. Uh, the idea was a book about structure illustrated with images of the model and also a set of elements that you can build the test by yourself, everything that is in the book. So this was the idea. Uh, this is another professor who always sent me emails uh, trying to, to have one. But to do that, I needed two things that I didn't have at the time, which was time because I was working in commercial hours. It's really hard to, to keep things going and also money because it was impossible to build like 10 units or 20 units of the model. It was really expensive to do like that. I needed to have volume. So I needed to 
need money to invest to produce this. And I spent years trying to find investments in Brazil. I talked to investors, big companies, a lot of people, and I didn't succeed. So after a long time, I started to search about crowdfunding. And this is a Brazilian crowdfunding platform. And I thought maybe this can be a solution to a start, for example. And I did this campaign for the first kit. Uh, the idea was to raise 50,000 Brazilian reais, this is about 12,000 euros, um, to produce 100, 150 units. And we had 45 days to raise this amount. And we launched in 2014, September 1st. We reached the goal with three days. We reached our goal. With 11 days was the, the biggest crowdfunding campaign in Brazil. And we finished the 45 days with 600,000 Brazilian reais. This is 1,200% of our initial goal. So it was a really success. I never imagined that. Um, those are some numbers. We got more than 1,500 supporters from 30 different countries for this crowdfunding campaign. Uh, this is how the space we need to rent for the, the company. We start a company. We rent a space. We did a lot of things that was, wasn't planned because I was planning to build by myself, just 100 kits, and everything changes after that. So just to have an idea, you could uh, support the projects from $9, for example, and you got different rewards for how much you pay for the project. So there was uh, $17 was a postcard right by, by hand, like a thank you note. Um, this uh, 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 photo holder and postcard, and it goes until 160 US dollars, you could receive the product. So this was the idea for the, the crowdfunding. And we had uh, other uh, values and other rewards for each. Uh, this was for universities with a lecture and also a workshop with the kids and also uh, reward with the logo of the university or company on the box uh, of the product. So it was different uh, kinds of supports. So 90% of uh, the pledges we received was to receive the product. So it worked as a, a pre-order uh, for the, the kit. Uh, after finishing the, the, the fundraising period, I realized that crowdfunding, it's more about the crowd than the funding. Of course, the funding is important, but the crowd is really important. The community that creates around this idea. So uh, the, the, the kit was set and everything was uh, defined because we put on the website how many pieces you get and how it works, but the manual which is the book that comes with the, the, the pieces, I was going to write yet. It wasn't done. So I invited everyone who wants to participate to write the book with me. So this was uh, three meetings in Sao Paulo. This was Saturday morning. No, was, everybody went there because they want to participate. And here we had professors from University of Sao Paulo. There were students from architecture, civil engineering, a lot of people from different fields participating. It was really interesting because they could play with the prototypes that we had to think what the manual will look like. And people from one day build structures completely different from the other day. So it shows how uh, when you have a lot of heads thinking it's real better than just one or two. So I also invited two professors, university professors, to write the, the manual after the, those meetings. So we could do um, a professional photo studio to make all those, the images for the manual. And it's all illustrated with images with the model. So you can follow those images to understand a lot of structural systems that we show. Um, we change a lot of elements also because we receive a lot of ideas from people who support the project. For example, the base where we assemble the structures, we got this idea to make the marks for the axis of the, the, the springs. So it's easier to 
to position the, the, the foundations. You don't need to measure to put the, the, it on the right position. So this is one thing that we did. Uh, a lot of things went wrong also, especially for plastic injection molding. And we had a lot of problems and a lot of time to trying to figure out how to solve those problems. The, the ground connections, we did a solution with just a steel uh, plate uh, with a stamping to this form. It didn't work after it was ready for, for assemble and we needed to put the, the steel sphere inside of it to make it work. So a lot of things that went wrong also. The company that we hired to make the box and the packaging thing, they went uh, bankrupt. So it was a nightmare sometimes. Um, also the ship that we bought the magnets from China because we don't produce this kind of magnets in Brazil, which is the neodymium magnets. And also the ship that was coming from China with the magnets got on fire. Those are images from the, the, the company that they sent us. Uh, we didn't know if the magnets was inside the place there was the fire was on. So it was also a different situation, but it wasn't. But it took like two months delay to get in Brazil. So it was really hard to manage all those things. Uh, this was the, the, the launch of the product after it was finished. This is in Sao Paulo, most of this those people are supporters and they could receive their reward at this day. It was really amazing because I could like thank all those guys in person because most of them I didn't know who it was because they, they supported from the internet. Those two companies bought the, the reward for the logo on the box. Uh, this is a, a Brazilian uh, wood structure company. They build structures with wood. Uh, this is the house of the owner of that company. Uh, this is in Sao Paulo, it's a wood truss, and he built the, his house with the, the Mola kit when we, he received it. There are some images. It's a really amazing house. This is an image that we did for the competition for the Biennale here in Madrid. Um, they just received the, the Riba International Prize for this project, which is a school made of wood structure in Brazil, it's from this company. So they just received this, this prize now. This is a video I will skip because we have this on our website. It's they saying about how was the, the to support a crowdfunding, they have their logo uh, in connection with another product. So it's a really interesting, if you like, you go to the Molo website, you can have this, this video. So I will skip this because I have a lot of things to show. So um, after shipping the product, I also realized again that crowdfund is much more than money. Uh, people start to share their images, like making a selfie with a structure, the other guy drinking a beer and building something. Sometimes it's uh, just playing with. And sometimes it's, it's a university activity or a class. Uh, there's zombies here. This is a structural engineering office in the United States. So there's a lot of different things you can find on the web uh, that people start to share and saying, hey, I received how he received the, the, the package. And people start to build things that we never imagined. This, this guy can make this with just one Mola kit. So it's really amazing. <laughs> this is a university in Belo Horizonte, Brazil. This is another university when professor trying to simulate like uh, dynamics and structure and the shaking table. There is Lego and a lot of other. There's also dogs playing with Mola. You can find this on the web. <laughs> this is an architecture office. It's a styled bridge. I don't know if you guys have too much thing to do in the office, but it was a nice structure. Another guy opened the, the box and showing how he received. And people from all ages studying and understanding structures just by playing. Those guys from, from Federal University of Paraná, Brazil, they wanted to support the MOLA project with 10 units. 
and they didn't have money for that, they did a crowdfunding from the crowdfunding. He did a crowdfunding inside the university to support the Mola crowdfunding project. It was really amazing. And uh, this was the day when I went there to do this workshop with professors and students and to deliver the reward that they supported. So it was really amazing. And I only realize about this story when I get there. So it was really nice to know. We have also the name of every supporter on the book manual. So there's the name of everyone who made this possible. So there's four pages of names. Uh, this is a professor in Brazil. He teaches physics for students, for kids, with MOLA. It's another application that we didn't did imagine before. And also some universities are making some competitions with the model. So it's a really interesting, another activity to understand the structures in a different way. Um, you have to know how to read a project design to assemble something. And it's really interesting. This is uh, a... Uh, uh, a stage, they, they, they build on one stage of the competition is that every team goes to the structure and take one element out. And there's another go, other team go and take another one. Who let the, the structure fail, collapses, it's out of the competition. So it's a really interesting uh, uh, activity. So they have to discuss which, which element they can, they can take it out. So it's really amazing. And sometimes uh, it can be just a rigid connection or a bar or anything. So this team is out. This is in Romania two weeks ago. I was there talking about MOLA and also doing the workshop. They are using the, the model for a few months already. So this is another activity with the universities. So these are uh, some things that you can find on the internet. And after that, we designed MOLA structure kit number two. Uh, the adjustable length bars, the bar that can adjust the length anytime you want, and also uh, lightweight connections, which are connections that are really lighter than the regular ones. And this was the project that was selected for the BNL here in Madrid. So this uh, model, two different elements. Uh, we have this special connection, which allow us to build, for example, uh, continuum beams, uh, grids, and other uh, structural systems. The idea is that the, both kits are 100% compatible, so you can put their pieces together to build other things, just like a Lego. This is the, the adjustable length bars. We took a lot of time to take to this solution, but, which was really simple, actually. Uh, it's a simple solution that you can just twist one side of the element to make it bigger or smaller anytime you want. And the real challenge for this is that we need an adjustable bar with the spring behavior so we can see the deformation. So that's the most uh, difficult thing to do. So we came up with this solution, which works really good. Uh, so we have, this is a special element you can use with MOLA 1 or MOLA 2, it doesn't matter. And we have also uh, hollow steel spheres. So we don't have material inside, so it's really lighter than the regular ones. And it's also a special connection that you can use with the model. So when you mix those elements, you'll be able to build different structural systems um, from different kind. And the company had just one year and a half operation. So we didn't have money to invest in new products. So yes, we went to the crowdfund again. And for a new campaign for the second kit, and it was a little bit bigger campaign to raise um, 350,000 Brazilian reais. This is about 80,000 euros to produce 1,500 units. 
and we had 39 days to raise this amount. Uh, we reached our goal with eight days. After eight days, uh, we reached our funding goal and we finished with 200% also for the second campaign. It was completely different because we already have a lot of people using the model. It was really different from the first one. So this is uh, the, the results from the, the second campaign. We received support from 35 different countries. Same thing, uh, small pledges, different rewards, just single elements, uh, the kit, and almost the same price from, from the first one, and it goes on. There's a lot of options to support the project. And also, uh, the reward for the, the last one here. I'll go back again. The last one here was the same for the logo and ITA, that, that uh, company, they were the first one to support us, to put their logo again on the second kit. Uh, this time I invited two professors also to write the manual for model number two. This is one of the pages of the model two. Uh, name of everyone. Those are some images that we have already with both kits, so people are building a lot of different things. This is um, just making a uh, comparison between the first one and the second one. Uh, how many days and how much we raised. Considering both uh, campaigns and also things we sold from the internet, we already shipped MOLA to 69 countries. Most of the international orders are universities and companies, engineering and architecture. Uh, Arup, it's one of the, our crowdfund makers, and I've imagined this, those, could, those guys could support us on the crowdfunding, especially a Brazilian crowdfunding platform. So we shipped kits for their office in London and also in Hong Kong. So. Buru Hapold also uh, bought the units. Um, last, last year and this year, I was at MIT, they are using also MOLA. Uh, it was a really surprise for me. Uh, those are some universities that are already using, that we ship to MOLA uh, from different countries, US, Iran, Sweden, Spain here, at the Polytechnic of Madrid, uh, Romania, and a lot of different places. So those are the kits uh, products we have today. Um, and actually I work for the whole thing, from the design of the product to the packaging and graphic design for manual, boxing and everything, all the campaigns. And those are real buildings that we are trying to simulate with all these elements. Um, as with, with the adjustable bars, it's, you'll be able to build different shapes and different things that would not be possible to the regular lengths of the kit. So those are some quotes from, from the internet, from design perspective and also from structure point of view. And it's really amazing to see all those things happen. We are working on Mola Structure Kit number three for next year. And yes, in a new crowdfunding campaign. But I think this time we are using Kickstarter, which is the famous, I think the famous platform in the United States because Catarse, which is the Brazilian one that we use, it's all in Portuguese, so it's really hard for people from other countries to understand that. So we are thinking to use uh, Kickstarter for this. Okay. We will have uh, cable behavior on the Mola Structure Key number three. So we'll be able to build like suspension bridges, uh, tensegrity structures, hanging cables, methods to form finding and other things. Um, i like to show you this. Uh, this what happened in these four years uh, from the, the, the first crowdfunding campaign uh, because a lot of people ask me in Brazil especially, what's the secret for a such successful crowdfunding campaign? And <clears throat> because they, they say, well, in just four years, you launched two crowdfunding campaigns. Uh, you went to a lot of countries. You're selling for a lot of countries, a lot of university using. And What's the secret for that? 
And I like to show you this because this part in black here, this period, um, is just one small part of a lot of time working on this. So I like to say this is my secret because most of the people, they know MOLA from the crowdfunding until now. So I spent 10 years in Brazil trying to find investment for this. And I thought about giving up a lot of times. And when I received emails from you, from Professor Jorge, from Professor Alan Nussbaumer from Switzerland, it was one thing that kept me on this project because I was thinking, man, uh, let's give it up and keep my life as an architect. And I received an email from George, from you, for example. I said, man, there's another crazy guy in the world that wants this, so I need to keep going. So it was really amazing. So that's why it's really amazing to be here today. So this is a kind of message that I like to leave you with. Uh, I like to say this is my secret hard work and don't give up. So that's it. And well, this is a small part of this whole process. Um, I'm also working with a new thing for the kit, which is a sensor kit. We will add sensors to the model, so we'll be able to see a lot of different things that we cannot see by naked eye. For example, we have um, base connections sensors. When you apply a load to the structure, you know instantly how many percent of your load is going to each column. So it will be easy to understand how the load is going through the structure. But this is a project for two years, I think. And we are already making some tests. And well, this is what I had to show you. I have the products here. If you like to get closer, we can use the table here and make some demonstrations. And thanks again for the invitation. And thanks for your attention. Thank you. I don't know if you guys had contact with the model already, so <laughs> you can come closer because um, while it's not a, a demonstration model that you're going to use in front of the class to show something, it's a personal thing. So the idea is that people need to use it. The scale is small, so it's not possible to build here to the whole room. So did you guys had contact with the model already? No? OK. <laughs> So this is, the idea is to make something really uh, compact. And this is smaller number one, smaller number two. I will start with this one, okay. Uh, do you have lights here? Okay. Uh, so here we have uh, the base, which is a steel plate, normal steel. Uh, we have the marks for the axis. Here we have the manual, which is the book. And you can follow a lot of different uh, structural systems. You can just follow the images if you like, if you don't want to read. It's all in Portuguese and English. So we talk a lot of, a lot of uh, different structural systems uh, so that you can understand the basic concepts. And after that, you start to build anything you want. So. I will build because it's cooler than just seeing the manual. And after I will show you the new elements. So uh, we have two types of connections on this. Okay, we can change this, changing the boundary conditions of the structure. I will make this revision, and you will do the same thing now. Go ahead. Now we got a smaller, but buckling effective length, and the load she needs to apply to make the buckling to occur is higher now. She knows that, because she's applying the load. She has it. She has a sensor. Yeah, yes. And this is the idea. We don't need to know how much the load is bigger than the, the other case. Uh, you just felt it, and this is the idea. After that, at the calculation, uh, it's important to say that, I didn't say in the presentation, I'm not talking against numerical models, I just think that intuitive knowledge is as important as calculation. And the idea is that this is a stage, and after that, we have all the process of verification and whatever. Okay. Uh, if we 
make your vision on the top. So you change this again. Go ahead. You got real smaller um, effective length now, and the loads will be the other ones, right? You can see it now. If you take with your other hand here, you can see the difference. Take this one. Yeah. It's the same element, the same cross section, we just changed the boundary condition. So this is the idea for just a simple element that we can understand this phenomenon, which is really hard to try to imagine that this happens, so we can feel it. Uh, so I will start to do the plane frame here. And one important thing is that most of the time we We divide the structure of different parts to analyze, right? Sometimes a plane, sometimes a single element. But it's important to understand that every structure works in space. There's no structure that works in a single plane. So if you try to build a plane frame, it, it can go anywhere. So to analyze this structure in a single plane, we need those other connections here. For example, uh, those are the bracing elements. We need this to brace the structure, for example, on this direction, so we can analyze the plane frame at this point, right? So, this is the, the structure we saw on the, the video, right? Pinned connection, this is an unstable structure, if we use, those are the bigger uh, bracing systems. If we use just one element, you can see this works with loads on this direction because it's in tension, this element here. But if the load's coming from the other side, it's in compression and it's a really slender element, so we don't have a compression resistance. That's why we use. Uh, both elements because you can guarantee depending on the side of the load see when I apply the load here I know that this element is in danger and it are resisting these forces here and all the opposite occurs when I apply the load here so I can see who is working and how this structure behaves right and the other thing is that we can Now I'm using the rigid connection only on the plane because I already braced the structure in the other direction. So we got a different behavior. You can see the, the moment transmission, not, not only for horizontal load, but if I apply a vertical load here, you can see the moment transmission to the columns. Here I have both rigid connections. If I take this out, I'm transmitting moment just for this column. This one I'm transmitting just vertical load. And it's easy to change any time you want and apply the load and see what's happening. So this is the idea. Let's try to build something more interesting. Now we have a special frame. Uh, it seems it's okay, the structure is stable, but if we analyze um, the different planes, we will see this uh, unstable structure, because this plane is okay if I apply the load here, it's braced, this one's okay, this one we have rigid connections, but this plane here, it's all pinned, so you need to figure out how to solve the structure as a whole system, right? And we can do a lot of things to make this work, for example, use the bracing system on this side. We don't need to use the same solution for the whole thing, right? For example, it's going to be a bracing system. And we can see the difference which structure is more rigid. It's the braced or the rigid connections. The bracing system is way more rigid than this solution here. So we can also see the difference between different solutions. And if I take this out, could you put 
the these elements on the horizontal? Yes. Before. Yes. before. Yes, that was what I was going to, to show, exactly this, because we can figure this structure, it's an unstable structure, right? What he's saying, to brace this plane, horizontal plane, can be a solution to make this a stable structure, mm -hmm. without changing anything on this plane. And this is really hard to, to, to see, to try to imagine. We, we can use the same diagonals to yes. brace this, or you can use a, a slab or this element to simulate a horizontal plane. So now the structure is stable because we brace this plane here. And this is really hard to imagine that bracing this plane will solve the problem on the other side of the structure. When I apply the load here, I'm transmitting the force to the bracing system on the other side through the horizontal plane. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a simple phenomenon, so but it's hard to imagine. So you can put doors here. Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> okay to open a window here, uh, depending on the architecture and the design. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, anything. If we have like a braces system, it would be possible to get in here. So this is one thing that we can simulate. And if we, we, we have also, we can do this if we like. Uh, now it's unstable again. Yeah, this is a plastic with magnets. Ah, okay. uh, we can also, this can also be a wall, for example. You can brace the structure with a wall system. It's another solution. But if we need to use a bracing system and also to open door here, we can have different configurations for the bracing system, not just the X shape, right? Okay. And we can simulate, for example, uh, like this. This is another solution, right? To brace this plane. I, 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 I made a, a, a pin connection, so I will use this here. It will work the same way. One bar is in tension, and the other one is in compression. If the load comes from the other side, it changes. So I got compression here and tension here. So this is another kind of bracing system that allow us to have an open here, or a window, I don't know. It's another solution that you can try and see what's going on. So I will go back to the other solution. I have this version. And then let's imagine that we have this structure here. And let's imagine for some reason I cannot have columns here because of the architecture or the ground does allow it, I don't know. It cannot be pinned because it doesn't work. So how, how can I solve this, this problem for this structure? Any idea? How can I have this structure here a rigid without column? Rigid, rigid connections. connections, okay? <coughs> Let's make it rigid connections here. So, this is one solution. Oh. You've got a cantilever <laughs> structure. Of course, here we have high deformation <laughs> elements, right? And what we can see here is that can you see the difference between this side of the structure and the other side? Here we have uh, continuity for the beam. Can you see the, yeah. the, the format shape here? Mm -hmm. Because we've got this rigid connection, so we're transmitting this moment not just for the column. Even the column, that column is more deformed than this one. Mm -hmm. Because we are transmitting the whole moment just for one element here, and here we are transmitting to more than one. If I take this element out here, see, now I'm transmitting only for the column, so we can see how this is distributed through the whole system, okay? Uh, but let's imagine that we cannot transmit the moment to the column because the column is being too big, so how can we have this structure here without column? 
on this part and without the rigid connection. In the video you saw some, some piece in order to give yes. continuity. Yes, no? continuity, yes. This one solution. Okay. Uh, this is on model number two, uh, <laughs> which is this element here. I take this smaller bar. Uh, so the idea is that we can have this element here. This is one solution. We got a cantilever here without transmitting moment to the column because it's pinned here, and we give continuity to the beam mm -hmm. with this element. And we also have this other kind that you can do it on the other direction. So you can have continuity in two directions. So on this way and also oops, on that way. And of course here we got high deformations for the structure. The idea is that so we can see the how the structure behave. And of course in a real structure we will not see such a deformation like this. So this is another solution for making a cantilever without transmitting moment to the column. And that's another solution for that. Tension, okay. tension elements, we can also use compression elements also. And we don't need this rigid connection here, right? We got a simply supported beam here, and this element is working on compression, right? And if I apply load here, see how this, the, the beam deformed shape is. And what's the difference between this beam, the formant shape, and this one? What's the difference? This one will have this shape, right? So if we see the spring here, we see the wires get closer on the top and far from one another on the bottom. So we know here that we have compression on the top and tension on the bottom of the element. And here is the opposite, right? It's like this. So we have compression on the bottom and tension on the top. So depending on the deformation of the bar, you can also see what's going inside of the element. Okay? Uh, we also have the possibility to do tension member, but we need another floor here to, to hold this uh, the structure here. So let's do it. Um, I know I need to brace this structure here, so... The architects normally don't like this solution. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's another element. Uh, well, the important thing is that to know what the solutions are to decide what you use. So, um, I will use reason connections here to give continuity for the column. So it will work as a single element here. <coughs> and we'll try to do this here. And take this from here. This is the idea. Uh, it's working, right? But we can see that the column, we are transmitting the whole load to the column, to the top of the column and push, pushing down. Um, so we can see the deformant shape and uh, going the, the load to the top of the element. And that's other things we can do to make this structure better. The interesting thing is that the beam collapse. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> see the deformant shape. And can you see this, the loads, like taking the structure this way on this side, but that we have the bracing system, and it's almost didn't change anything. And here you have a horizontal displacement here. Um, but we can make it better if we use another element here. If you do this, for example, you make it uh, better for the column, for example. Now we are transmitting the, the forces to other elements. I take this out here. So. So we can do the same thing there. So this uh, is <laughs> yeah, yeah. And if you have the same structure here, 
we can think as a bridge, for example. Mm -hmm. We have a style bridge here, mm -hmm. and we got a big span with our columns here. So this is structure is not stable because if I apply load here, it's dependent on the horizontal plane also. So we need to fix this. We can use we have different elements on mod two, so it's possible to <coughs> use this to brace and now this structure is stable so it's uh, simple things again that it's easier to understand by building something and another interesting thing is that I'll show this here and the idea for that is that you can put both plates together and uh, you got the same access for building bigger structures so the idea. The block sheet is metal? Yeah, metal, yes. Mm -hmm. And you can use the other side if you want, so if you don't want the, the, these to influence your creativity. Your <laughs> <laughs> you can use the other side if you like. Uh, another interesting thing about the... the All the connections are throughout the borders, no? Yes, uh, between bars, connections are made by... <coughs> this and this, this connects to the spring and also to the sphere. Because we have three magnets here, so one goes to the sphere and the other ones go to the spring or, or to, the, to the ground. So other connections are through magnets and the spheres makes the connection between the bars, between the elements. It's a hollow sphere? The, the hollow sphere is the, those black ones here because, I will show you, um, this is a special element. This is way too expensive to put it in the kit. I want it, but it makes the price too high, so I didn't. And it's not, you don't need this element to assemble. We can build a lot of different structures with the regular ones, but these are for special structures. If you like to, to you can feel the difference. Um, you can pass it. See the difference between the hollow one and the, you can see now if you do this, uh, for example, mm -hmm. this is the, and the other one. So it's way lighter than this, so you can be, build like bigger spans, uh, bigger cantilever structures. So these are special elements that you can use. But what I was saying is that one interesting thing about uh, bracing planes is that uh, how many planes, if we have one plane with multiple uh, frames, how many frames do we have to brace to make the structure stable? Imagine if we have two frames here, for example. Do I need to brace both planes? Just one? What, what do you think? Wrong. Yeah. Sometimes it's hard to imagine that. And the main thing is that you visualize it. Yes. For example, this is an unstable structure, right? But we don't need to brace all the frames. It can be two, three, four, five. If you brace just one. <coughs> So the whole system is stable now, and I did anything here, so see, structure is stable. And this is also hard to imagine windows. when we never did. Doors and windows. Yes, <laughs> yeah. So I'm not saying for a real building this would be enough. Depending on the calculations, we will decide if one is enough or you need more or whatever. So this is another interesting uh, phenomenon that we can understand. So the idea is to mix all those elements. Those are the, the adjustable bars. So we have here four different lengths. So we can reach any length of the system with these four uh, sizes. So we have here the element. You just need to twist one side. It gets bigger or smaller. You can also still see the deformations. This, this was the the 
most important thing about this element. So I can use it, there is this element here if I like. It can be bigger, don't need to take it out of the structure to change it. So you can do anything you want with this kind of element. It's really interesting. And you can try if you like. Just to understand how, how it works. Uh, I spent a lot of time thinking about this, <laughs> but now we got a simple solution that, for example, what happens if uh, this column here For example, what happens if we got some problems on this ground connection and for some, some reason what happens if the, the columns go down and uh, you can simulate different situations. We can also use these elements uh, because when we got they are closed like this, it's more rigid than the regular ones. So you can also use these elements as a rigid element compared with to the regular ones. For example, we have a high tower. You can use those elements on the bottom. So it will be more rigid. It will be more resistant for buckling, for example. So it's another way to use this kind of element. And for Mola 3, we are making, as I said, cable behavior. We have cables with different connections and also adjustable connections for cables so you'll be able to assemble and after that adjust the tension on the cables and we also have one element that you add to the spring and make it rigid uh, because when we have tension structures we cannot allow deformations on the, the, the compression members otherwise we don't have tension on the cables so we made this special element that turn this element into a rigid bar and it allows you to make uh, tension structures. So this is another new thing that we launched in Model 3 also. Um, so let's put this back in this place. Yeah. So we, you can have an idea what's what's possible to, to, to build. Uh, for example, talking about trusses. Um, can you can you try? <coughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, to digitize this rectangle. Region here? We have this uh, okay. Mostly the other summit. Racing, yes. racing. This bracing. Okay. To demonstrate that we only need three three bracing for the whole movement. Yeah, but we need to, to brace the, the yes. horizontal. Yes. Yeah, yes. Yeah, it's the same thing we did with the, the this lab, right? I'll take this out. But better with bracing. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Take this. With, with triangulation. Yeah. This out. Yeah. Normally we, so, we, we yeah. put uh, four braces. I'll take this out, right? Yeah. So this is uh, unstable, right? And he's saying that we need just to brace three, three planes. Instead of four. Yeah. Yeah, but we need to make this, uh, maybe we can make it with the bracing system also. Is that what you're thinking? Yeah. So, yeah. so now it's a stable structure. We brace just three planes and a special frame, but we also need to, to brace the horizontal. Mm -hmm. So this is the same thing we did with this lab it works the same way. We can also put the rigid connection here if we like. Not really. You can use it on a horizontal plane also. So. And now we got a different behavior and it's another way of doing it. So, um, for example, for trusses, we know that uh, a rectangle or square shape of a plane frame. It's unstable when we have pinned connections. We saw here. And 
is the difference when we use another element and make these triangles. It's stable structure, right? We didn't, we didn't change the bars, we didn't change the connections, we just changed the shape. And this works not on a single plane, but if we have triangles in different planes, we've got a stable structure and that works fine. And you can have different shapes. You can use as a square base pyramid, for example. It's a very common shape for uh, spatial frames. You can repeat this a lot of times and get a different structure. You can also have all well, the shapes, if you like. Uh, just add more elements and. Um, to show you uh, I'll try to build a uh, truss here let's do it here you know it's really hard to assemble a truss on the top of the building so I will assemble on the ground <laughs> and after that you're gonna put it on the place in the right place so. And it's hard to build just one because in one plane it will not work. So we're going to build two to brace them. Uh, it will be easy to understand. Uh, I would like to start with this structure here. Let's start here. Better. Okay. You can also make music. Yes. <laughs> okay, I'll take this out. Rigid connections. To talk about trusses, I like to start with this structure here. Uh, if we apply a load, vertical load here, we will see what happened with this structure. You got this both joints going far from one another. So if I use one bar here, I'm making a truss here, okay? Make a triangle. If I apply the load here, we got a better structure for this load. And it's easy to understand that this bar is under tension because it's not allowing the joints to get far from one another. So this is one solution, okay, for this structure here. It's not stable because it's moving in this direction, but okay. Um, if we have this same structure here, if we have this. this take this out, this column out, <laughs> we see the opposite 
uh, from the first case, which is that the joints get closer. So I can take this element and use it here to make a truss, a bigger truss, three triangles, spanning a bigger span. And it's a simple structure. It's easier to understand now. And it's easy to understand that we have tension here and compression here. You just need to take the element out to see what happened. So it's easy to understand that. In fact, one here, I can take this also out. So this is one solution for trusses, for example. And another characteristic is for trusses that we have <coughs> sorry, uh, bars working in compression and tension. Uh, only if we apply the load on the joint, right? Because if I apply the load here, this is not good. Uh, this is not compression, this is not tension, so maybe this structure will be heavier than the structure that we have loads only on the joint. So it's another concept that it's nice to play and test and understand that's how it works. So this is uh, just uh, apply. <laughs> oh yeah, before apply. Uh, here it's braced, so you not move this way. If if I got uh, rigid connections on the other direction, you maybe we'll be able to see the rotation here. Uh, what region? Okay. Now we can see how the thing works uh, as a whole thing, right? The structure. So we can move this way, we can move that way, we can move also this way. And it depends on the load we apply. If we fix here in the upper level. Okay. Uh, from the, the yeah. truss. Yeah. Uh, only if we don't have this, this element here. Uh, this out. Now it's almost unstable structure because some stable. Okay. See? Mm -hmm. So we need to, to think the structure as a whole thing. So we need to brace. Uh, it can be in equilibrium, but if we apply any load there, it will collapse. So you can also make it rigid, but if you make it rigid, you got moment transmission, so this is not good for so the truss. Sometimes trust. students think that if you brace here, you don't need this one. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see. If we brace here, we are bracing just this plane here. So this can move like this and rotation like that. Yes. So actually, need to brace almost everything to fix the structure. So the idea is that we can play, and most of the time we learn more when we fail by a symbol, trying to assemble something. But you can have an idea here how many structure systems we can create with the model, and especially with the, the adjustable bars. It's interesting because if you have a truss here, you can change the length of the bars and maybe make a curve than yeah. other systems. So this is an interesting thing to, to give more possibilities. So I don't know how our time is. I think we should yeah. sort of finish now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So thanks, thanks again. Thanks thank you very much. I think that we have